Hello. Uh, in this video, we're going to be talking about some of the additional things we're going to need to know about uh, multivariate regression in R as opposed to univariate regression. Uh, now, this is not going to be a super long video because uh, most of the stuff that we are talking about in terms of multivariate regression as opposed to univariate regression is conceptual. Like, what does it mean to control for a variable? And that is how I covered in the other videos. The actual coding aspect of it is not too much more complex uh, than just the univariate part that we already covered. Uh, now, of course, there are some other things we could do, like controlling for stuff by hand, uh, but I'm not going to do that. We'll do that in the slides. But uh, here, I'm just going to talk about the stuff that you really need to know. Uh, not conceptual, just technical. Okay, so uh, let's load up some data. Uh, let's just load up the data set we've been using for a little while. Let's use the MT cars data set. And we're going to use uh, two uh, libraries here. We're going to use the uh, JTools library, as we have been using. Um, we're also going to use the car library. Uh, so the JTools library, of course, has export sums, which we've already been using to show the results of regression models. Uh, and the car library has the linear hypothesis function, which we'll be using to do a, a F test of multiple restrictions on our multivariate regression model. So we're first going to just do a multivariate regression. So we've done univariate regressions before, right? So M1, let's use univariate regression. Uh, let's say we're going to regress uh, miles per gallon on horsepower in the MT cars data set. Great. We've done that. Uh, we can look at the result, export sums of M1. Of course, I have to change the size of the window to make that look good. Uh, but there it is. Uh, so you can see the univariate regression that we already have. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's go ahead and make a multivariate regression. All we have to do, it's very simple. Uh, instead of doing a Univariate regression, as we already did, we just take what we had for model two plus whatever you want to control for. I want to control for AM. I don't know, it's your transmission type. I don't care. I don't really care about the model here. I'm just showing you how to do multivariate regression. You just do plus whatever you want to control for, and it's done. And then we can do uh, two models at once here M1 and M2. And let's run that. Look at that in a nice little table there. Ooh. And there we have it. You can see that adding the control shrunk the size of the coefficient on the HP from point, negative 0.07 to negative 0.06. That's the basic idea of adding control. We can do more than one control. Of course, uh, we could add uh, HP and AM and uh, what else we got in here? Uh, cylinders. Number of cylinders as controls. You can add as many as you want. It's just plus each time. Okay, that's the basic idea. Uh, now, oh, M3, I want that to be. Okay, so now uh, I'm going to show you how to do a linear hypothesis test. So in, the other thing with uh, multiple variables, with more than one variable on the right-hand side, is we can test more than one variable on the right-hand side. We can do tests of whether one coefficient is equal to another, uh, or half of another, or negative of another, or whatever. Or we can test if multiple coefficients are equal to zero at the same time. Right? The t, the t, coef the t statistic in our regression table tells us about the significance of a single uh, coefficient or the distribution of a single coefficient, if you prefer. Uh, but maybe we're interested in whether more than one variable as uh, coefficient is equal to zero at the same time. We can do that with a linear hypothesis test. So all we got to do is linear hypothesis. This is from the CAR uh, library. Uh, put in the model that I'm interested in, and then it's going to be a, uh, a C, so a vector of the different things I want to test. So one thing I could test, for example, is, hey, is the coefficient on AM equal to coefficient on SIL? Let's see. Uh, we get a significant coefficient there, right? A very tiny p-value. So that tells us that, yeah, the coefficients are different there. So here I can test whether the coefficients are equal. I could equally test if they're the negatives of each other. Uh, I could test if one of them is half of the other, right? You can do whatever you really want in here. Uh, also, commonly, we'll be testing if multiple coefficients are equal to zero at the same time. So for this, we'll do linear hypothesis of M3. And here, I'm just going to list the variables by themselves. And it will, by default, know that I want to compare them to zero. So I'm going to say AM, and I'm going to say SIL. I do that. I get, once again, you can see that it's testing these two things, right? That AM is equal to zero and that SIL is equal to zero. And it rejects that they're both equal to zero. Unsurprisingly, they were not equal to zero by themselves. And what is this actually testing? What this is testing is, well, 
we, we know that the, each coefficient has a distribution, right? There's a sampling distribution to each coefficient, right? So that if we did this over and over and over again with different samples, we get different coefficients every single time, right? And there's a distribution, and then the average of that distribution should be the population coefficient, okay? But now we have two coefficients. So it's not just a, a distribution of one coefficient sitting next to the distribution of another coefficient. They could be jointly distributed, right? It could be that in some samples, you tend to get high values of both coefficients. In some samples, you tend to get low values of both coefficients. Maybe they go in opposite directions. Maybe in some samples, you tend to get high values of one coefficient and low values of the other, right? Just like two variables from data, these can be positively or negatively correlated coefficient sampling distributions. So keeping in mind the correlation of these two co uh, coefficients, well, that might affect whether they're likely to be zero together or not. And so we can test whether the two of them together, uh, what's the probability that they are indistinguishable from zero? How often do you get something as distinct as the joint pairing of these two or stranger, right? Is that the idea of a hypothesis test? That's what's going on here. Uh, so it's testing whether they are both non-zero at the same time is what it's testing uh, based on that joint sampling distribution of the two coefficients together or three coefficients together or four or whatever you're testing. All right, that's it. Thank you.